So here I'm going to talk about logistic regression in R. I keep it pretty simple. I just look at the coefficients and pseudo R squared. I don't do any marginal effects or anything because um, for my class, a lot of times it's just an extension of regression analysis. Now remember, logistic regression has as the y variable or as the dependent variable, it's a binary variable. That's either zero or one. It's not continuous. Um, and only a zero or one. It's also not count, right? So it's only zero, one, no, no numbers other than that. Okay, so uh, one thing is I found this this uh, package RMS, which gives you pseudo R squared, which is uh, kind of like R squared, but it's based on log likelihoods. Um, I don't calculate it by hand here. I just show it from that package. Okay, so otherwise you just use base R um, uh, with the GLM. But anyway, so I'm going to get my data. I got it on my GitHub site here. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to uh, pull all the, uh, uh, or leave out all the NAs, right? And you can look at the data both in terms of uh, the variables and the size and so forth. Uh, basically, this is some real data from the census. It's based on some stuff I've did with, with bank locations. I've modified it a little bit. Definitely the model is, is pretty simple. But what I'm, I'm looking at is some uh, socioeconomic variables for some different uh, Chicago tracks. It's about 2,000 of them. Uh, what I took was the counts, uh, which I did in, in uh, you know some GIS stuff in R, um, number of banks uh, from the FDIC file into each block, that are located within the borders of each block group. And I converted it. I have the count, right? Because like in the loop, there might be 50 banks in a block group. But I just converted to zero or one, no banks or, or, or one or more. And I got some demographics, including vacancy rates, percent white, percent black, <coughs> percent with of households below twenty-five thousand dollar income annually, and then below seventy-five thousand, um, and then uh, uh, no high school, or right? maybe this is above, uh, or or no high school here. So, anyway, the idea here is that this can be used for different um, uh, measures. Uh, and they can be used as explanatory variables to see like which block groups have. Uh, you know, a bank or not. So you might say, like, what are the determinants of whether or not a block group has a bank, okay? Um, so the dimensions here, like I mentioned, there's 2,141 block groups that have, you know, all the data. Um, and then we can look at, oh, I also did the uh, GIS neighborhoods, right? So some of these, but not all, and I, I didn't work too hard to make sure they all overlap. Uh, some of these are, are the Chicago uh, neighborhoods in which the uh, banks or the block groups are located, okay? So I'm going to look at the binary variable first, which is bank count B, B for binary. And you can look that it's minimum zero, maximum one. You can look at the head. You can see that there's just basically ones and zeros in there. But the, I also include the count data, which I'm not using here, but you can see what is done. Okay, so here the maximum is 49. Um, and you could do a different study. You could use what's called a Poisson distribution, or if it's over dispersed, you can have a negative binomial. Um, you would not use OLS if it's count data, but there's some other methods for that. You can look here. I, I did the tail because here's a three and here's a two. Right? We're, not, we're not doing that one. All right, so here's the statistics on each of these. Um, what I've got here is you know different variables. I'm going to mostly focus on the 25,000 dollar income is a measure of poverty vacancy rate right um so you might think that uh, block groups with more vacancies or lower incomes might have fewer banks they might not have a bank likewise more white residents more banks or more black residents less banks which is something i found in a paper of mine all right so what we're going to do is have a logistic regression okay again the dependent variable is uh is one or zero all right and i'm going to do some different models with different explanatory variables so I'm going to attach my data. This GLM is the one you use, and then the family is binomial in quotes, so this is what you would do. And here it is. I'm going to have the logistic regression zero, which has, um, I think I said below, uh, this is above 75,000 uh, income. All right, uh, so this is my model. Okay, uh, trade, uh, me, count of banks, all right, one or zero, uh, vacancy rate, higher income people, lower income people, and then uh, this is the model. Okay, so it's basically, there's some economic theory behind this that I kind of detail what you might expect each variable sign to be. I run the regression, and then I do the summary of it. And you can see here that uh, you've got, if you know uh, how to interpret the coefficients, vacancy rate, this is zero. All right, so higher vacancy rates mean less likelihood, because it's significantly negative, less likelihood that there's a bank. But the income variables are not significant. You might say, well, why include high and low? Maybe that's, you know, they're, they're collinear or something. But right now, only the vacancy rate is significant, right? Now, uh, one thing I'm doing, too, is that 
I am going to do this RMS package, all right? So I'm going to have um, a second way to do it. And then the nice thing about it is um, I have to install it, or at least get it in here, all right? Um, one thing about it is that uh, it gives the same results, but it is going to have um, the, a bunch of diagnostic statistics in here as well. All right. So the idea is that you have, um, you know, one, one of these measures is called pseudo R squared, which is, again, uh, you know, as if it was R squared. Um, and it's right here. Um, it's pretty low. All right. It's point, point 0.7. All right. Oh, excuse me, point zero seven. All right. So it's not, this model is deliberately not very good. This is not what I would put in a published paper. I'm just kind of showing what the coefficients look like. Right. I would not make any assumptions off of these models here. It's just for explanatory purposes. Right. So we've got the stats, 10, and then this here, all I did was I actually went in and got the stat, only the stats, and then I actually had to find it. It's actually the 10th one. So this is the pseudo R squared, and I could pull that into a table. Right. So that's just one model. I'm going to try some other specifications. Right. So here I've got uh, logistic regression one, and here's my uh, summary here, and you can see that, they, again, Leaving off low income, only the vacancy, only the vacancy rate is significant, right? Again, significantly negative. All right, I, I won't show you the, the pseudo R squared, but it's going to come up. I'm saving these so I can make a little table later. Here, now I have only the low income, All right? And what we have here is, again, not significant. Look at the p-value is really high, t-value is really low, but on vacancy rate, t, uh, in this case, oh, it's actually given the z-score. Z-score is really, really a significantly low. In other words, the absolute value is high, right? P-value is zero. So again, only vacancy rates coming up. Now, what comes in more interesting is LR, the logistic regression three, LR3, percentage black, all right? Which you could say is evidence of discrimination. This is significant, all right? Although it is significantly positive, so you might have to look at that, all right? So it might be what's called counterintuitive, but it is a significant coefficient, all right? Um, and so that's one way when people could look at other factors besides economics in terms of bank location, right? Now, look just LR4, the fourth one, is including percentage white, and that is not significant. All right, so there's there might be something there, but again, I'm not making any assumptions off of these models because because you'd have to do a whole lot of testing. These these R squares are so low anyway. Right, so here we go. Um, so I make a little table here. I'm combining all of that. All this is is making a table, giving some column names, and then. Here, um, what I could do, if I want to, is I could round these, maybe a little bit better, to three decimal places. And you could see here, although maybe I'll have to do it to four because a lot of these are now tied. All right, and you look here, maybe um, the third one is the best choice. So <coughs> that's what I was thinking about. All right, but but again, these are that's a choice of some really mo models that don't explain much. Period. All right. So that is that is how you do it. So you can the way I'm doing it at least is just you you just have to keep in mind you use a different model because you have a different explanatory variable. I'm not going into all the detail about it. I'm just simply using it as an extension of regression where we're looking at sign significance of the coefficients in R squared. Um, but you can try different specifications. And here I'm using this this uh, pseudo R squared to pick the best model because it does have the best explanatory power for what it was worth. Right. Um, one other thing I want to show is here, I showed the two variables we found to be significant. This is what a um, variable will look like here, right? So here's percent vacancy, right? For the most part, it goes from zero to 100 across Chicago. But you can see here that like there's zeros and ones and possibly, all right, there could be, uh, you know, a difference between zeros and ones where the vacancy rate is higher. You can see maybe more gaps. And that's what we're kind of looking at. We're going to get that kind of a curve or if it's negative like that. Percent black, same same thing here. Here you, you actually see um, more zeros and fewer ones over here. So this is this is what the data look like. It's not a scatter plot like I tend to show. This is just literally two lines of, of ones and zeros, and you're trying to fit that curve through it. Okay, so that's kind of the point. Uh, one, I just want to show how you can do it. Uh, GLM is most common. But I also found this RMS package. This is how you do it. It looks like the linear model, you know, if you know how to do a regular regression. Interpretation, I'm trying to keep it pretty similar, right? So I've got a binary dependent variable and I've got some choices for some continuous explanatory variables, running some different specifications, and then I'm comparing which ones are going to have 
um, you know, significant coefficients, which coefficients are significant, and then which model of all the specifications has the highest explanatory powers, right? So it's just a quick intro to logistic regression, but it does show how you can use some of the same ideas to, uh, to analyze a different type of data.